and welcome to the Idle Chat with the Wait What podcast. We have Nearly. returned. <laughs> Nearly. We have returned. Yeah. And we are a threesome again. We are yes. a threesome Reunited again. Reunited and it feels, or I suppose it's all right. Yeah. I look Leave forward to me and Mitchell. I look forward to me and Mitchell Eiffel Tower in Liam. <laughs> Couldn't pay me enough. <laughs> um, yeah. And, you know, if you enjoy this content, please do all the things it says on the banner below. We won't yes. go on that banner. We updated it. Oh, say X. Well, on Twitter. Yep. Um, yes. yes. This is the first, this is the first like, time we recorded as a as a free since we went met up and went to a wrestling event. Yeah. We haven't spoken about it. We haven't spoken about it yet. So we should probably talk about our day. It was hot, man. (laughs) (laughs) It was was a warm day, bro. Yeah. I I feel I dressed appropriately for the occasion. I I wore jeans, um, but I did not feel too hot. I wore trousers. I was okay. Wished I wore shorts, but... I was oh, okay. Mitchell got, it. Mitchell got it right. Brought a handbag. <laughs> I brought a handbag. Uh, the fourth, yeah. The fourth person that I was with was, looked hot all day. <laughs> he was he standing still and he was sweating. <laughs> he was Cecil. <laughs> yeah, he looked like security. So we had our own security that was shit because people <laughs> kept getting close to us. <laughs> yeah, he that was, was, uh, it was shit though. He didn't, yeah, he, he, was didn't, shit. he didn't block the bridge when we walked over it. No. No. Um, no, so do you know we... what? I'll tell you what. What a fucking show it was, though, for a little, yeah. uh, for a little independent. Well, not it's so good, little. Man. Did, it's not so it was, little. We, we did rev. We saw. Well, no, rev the show Pro. itself, where it was, it yeah. was in yeah. a small. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We saw, we saw Rev Pro. Um, they had just had their eleventh anniversary show at the cover. So box, this was basically like, the fallout, wasn't it? It was like a week beforehand, uh, where they had just shown like. Osprey versus Takagi and uh, Zack Sabre Jr. showing up and Chris Jericho turning up and fucking attacking Osprey and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, none of that happened. <laughs> TV <laughs> tapings. Uh, was, I say, yeah, it was TV taping, really, because they show it on demand. Um, yeah. And, I mean, we might as well say it now. Um, Osprey was there. Osprey yeah. was there. We, we, we were just, we were just literally, he was, what, like, stones throw away, literally, was just there chilling. Yeah. Yeah, um, Mitchell spotted him first and then just nudged me and just went Osprey. And then I looked over and, yeah, he's just chilling watching the match kind of thing. And obviously, we didn't go bother him or anything like that because he's, you know, just doing it. And also, if we we went went and bothered him, it would have taken away from everything in the ring. Yeah, and also, like, the crowd obviously are used to seeing him as well. So, like, they didn't... Like, we would have looked like, like fucking that. marks if we had done exactly. that. <laughs> Such marks. If we just like, fucking Osprey. I would have beaten myself up outside. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, the crowds. I I enjoyed the crowd. I, I thought the, the crowd, crowd, apart from... I <laughs> <sighs> the woman that's in front of was really... <sighs> she was... Drunk. Really she irritating. Was, she was drinking. She was into the show. I was. I thought she was going to throw hands with that worthy female wrestler, though. I thought yeah, she was going to throw hands. Yeah. That was good, though. I enjoyed that seeing woman. That. that woman was being a child. She was a okay, child. Well, we'll get to it. We'll get to it because I've got the card. Um. So yeah, we saw the uh, we saw the show, and look, you know, we're going to say what we like the matches there have been like that, and may spoil results and stuff. Um. But you know, check out the show still and on demand. There's mm. a couple of funny. There's a couple of moments that I I yelled out that I was quite quite proud of. I hope make the show because I think I'm myself. There was funny. one that was so funny that I could I I, I couldn't stop laughing. I'm gonna well, say I mean, it now. I'm just gonna say it now. Someone got chopped real fucking hard. It went dead silent, and Dave just shouted out, "Whoa, oh, chopped like that makes your dick go hard." And <laughs> I was done. I was done. I mean, I mean, I went, "Oh, that's hard enough to make your dick stiff." <laughs> and I just, and I just, I, I just couldn't stop laughing. It was so funny. Also, I mean, we nearly got dived on multiple times. Like we nearly oh, got squished. Yeah. I was yeah. sat on well, the end we were... next to the camera. I nearly got yeah. squashed. We we sat on the opposite side to where the majority of the dives happened, but we did get a couple of dives on our side as well. Um, and yeah, the uh, the other the other one, I would get. We'll get to it anyway. So yeah, the first <laughs> match that we saw was Shah Samuels def- defeating Connor Mills for the British Cruiserweight. 
championship. That, that was a great. Both. That's a great match. To be fair, it was a good opener, definitely. Yeah, yeah the crowds. The, the, the it was very clear baby face and heel in this. Shah Samuels was the baby face. He was going east all the time because he's from East London. And then um, everyone kept poking and, me and going, oh, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, uh, that's my was, guy. Funny Mills, I, think, funny I think I think Colin Mills did a decent job playing uh, playing the heel. Um, they went eleven minutes. Um, their work didn't was... he hit a destroyer? Good, yeah, I think so. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah, they were. Yeah, they, I can't, to be honest, I can't remember much of like the moves, moves that are through much of the matches. I was mainly just going for like you know kind of like their work. Oh, there's so. one match I remember. <laughs> there's one match I, I remember a lot stuff. of. Yeah, there's one match I remember because uh, that was fucking yeah. brutal. But yeah, he won the he won the title, um, and everyone went crazy for the for the finish and stuff. Um, but it's the cruiser cruiserweight championship. So later on in the show, uh, Connor Mills comes out and says that Shah Samuels was overweight for their title match. Uh, so they got out some scales and they weighed Shah Samuels, and he was just a little bit over. He was and two of six. I, yeah, and that's when I yelled out, "That's a violation." That's a violation. Uh, <laughs> Personally, I wouldn't have it. <laughs> um, some woman told him yeah. to take all his clothes off. Yeah, weird. yeah, um, yeah. Connor Mills, children there. So yeah, because Connor Mills pointed this out, he uh, kept the title. Um, I, you could hear the guy that runs the Pro say to Charles Samuels that they'll do it again, kind of thing, and they'll probably have a rematch at a bigger show. Um, so yeah, that was a nice little story that I did not. Any cause? Didn't see. he catch a super kick for his uh, for his troubles, and then free threw him yeah, into yeah. the uh, threw him into the wall as well. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, another thing that was. <laughs> Quite funny that I digress that the ring bell wasn't an actual bell. It was just a sound it wasn't. It was thing. a sound effect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, got, that got that. Took, I want to say um, that in that match, the, the ring must have moved an inch because yeah. Oh, yeah. they were hitting them ropes. And at one point, I was like, "That ring's in the tip, and we're gonna die. <laughs> we're gonna die in West London." Yeah. Uh, so the next match after that was JJ Gale defeating Robbie X, which was the high flying flippy do kind of match. Um, flippy do da. Personally, I didn't care much for this because it was flippy, flippy, flippy. I thought it was pretty good. The crowd—it was, was cool to cool. see, but the, the crowd was definitely more behind Robbie X than they were JJ Gal, and JJ Gal was the one that won after five minutes and fifty seconds. I was quite surprised how fast it was, to be fair. Um, yeah, but yeah, they, they, you can't do offense something. like that for too long. Yeah. Uh, after that was a tag match. We had the Greedy Souls, which was a heel uh, team, defeating uh, the, Veloc- the the Velocities. Uh, Jude London and Paris de Silva. Um, that oh, was yeah, just your two. Greedy. That was your two high flyers against two brutes. Yeah. Oh yeah. The greedy souls, Brendan White and Danny Jones, were like you know obviously doing a lot of the heel tag team stuff, cutting off half the ring. I like. I enjoyed the tag team matches the most. I would say seeing them live. There was also I a lot of crowd nice. dives. <laughs> yes, there were. Yep, yep. Um, and yeah, the greedy souls uh, won. Uh, they won after 14 minutes, 24 seconds. There was a, a point where they had hit a really sick double team move on one of the velocities. And I thought, oh, that's good. That's the finish. That's it. That and should then, be the finish. Oh, uh, yeah. And then it, it wasn't. And then they did a uh, another finish later on, which I thought wasn't as strong. Well, uh, they did the move, move again perfect. and then picked him up and did something else. Was yeah. like, why don't you just yeah. finish with that move? Yeah. Um, but, you know, good. Greedy Souls. They also beat up a woman. That was later on. Um, yeah. Next, uh, Luke Jacobs, who had just come off a massive match with Tomohiro Ishii in the Copper Box a week ago. Uh, the crowd were all chanting uh, that he was five star Jacobs because he should have got five stars in that. Match. Oh, that guy. Yeah, yeah, but he only got uh, four, four, four and, and three quarter, four and three quarter, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. that was he was um, he hit the he smacked the shit out of that guy. We had yeah, he played, played someone called Wild Boar. Which you know, yeah. the three people in front of us were very into the wild boar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which made it a bit, bit awkward. I am surprised. Awkward. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. we were literally every time he got slapped, we were behind them, which is like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, because like Luke Jacobs was pretty damn good. Like I had to say, like it was, it was a great and it was a competitive match as well. They went fourteen minutes, so you know they they went back and forth. Wild boar, hmm. I thought was going to win it. He closed line yeah. the fuck out of boar at the end yeah. as well, didn't he? Yeah, what this about, was a what big. About the- no, yeah. yeah. Like, Luke Jacobs is probably... The, I, I saw how young he is kind of thing. He's like a Gunther-style kind of person that I could see going, like, very far. And probably WWE would take him in the future. I could see that happening. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, that was good. He bowed to the crowd afterwards. Um, he was very tickled by uh, the crowd chanting five stars at him. Um, I, I noticed that he, 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 he enjoyed that. Like a little smile. He let slip a little smile on the smirk. Yeah. yeah. Um, next, I think it was the best match of the of, that we saw. That was the Knights, Ricky Knight and Zach Knight defeating uh, Sunshine Machine. That was um, so good. How the yeah. fuck is Zach Knight not wrestling on TV? How? Oh, man, the man he was, is huge. He is chiseled as well. He is chiseled he is, in stone. That's the He's one quick. where they, they did a DDT on the floor, weren't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's sort of finished. Yeah, yeah. They, it was on the other side. We didn't hear it. We didn't see it, but I'll tell you what. We fucking heard it. We heard it, yeah. Um he is yeah, so that, he nearly tipped he nearly tipped the ring over on his own, but it was great because they yeah. were slapping each other. Mm. He was like, Is that um, all you got? Is that all you got? Yeah. yeah. Uh Sunshine Machine were a good baby face tag team kind of thing. They had their high flying moments and stuff. Yeah, like they that. were a baby um, face tag team, but no one wanted them to win. They didn't care. They yeah. cared more about Yeah. Knights. Um, yeah, and yeah, the night the knights won. Uh, it looks at certain points like they were going to turn on each other because at one point Ricky Knight Junior slapped the shit out of Zach Knight. Oh, he and bitch Zach, slapped it. Did, yeah, he, and all that did was fire Zach Knight up to beat up Sunshine Machine and even more, and then they eventually won the match and reconciled. And yeah, they did. They, did they square they up are, again they at are, the end first? Yeah, well, no, well they, they got in each other's they, faces and were laughing while they were doing it. And they turned babyface later on, as we will uh, as we'll mention, because uh, they yeah. start wrestled this as heels, and then they turned babyface later on. Um, when uh, in the women's match, pretty decent. Uh, Alex Windsor was the uh, heel woman against Maya Matthews, who it was, was a child. yes, about oh, the spear. She, she looks about 15, 16. but she was good. Yeah, that spear that she, that, she oh, she, that spear she hit with me, I should cut her in half. But she yeah. hit with a spear, and me and Dave were going go, go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and there's one point where she put a sleeper hold over and over again. I was going, Red Rum! <laughs> um, Alex Windsor, I thought, was a fantastic heel. She came out with bitch face. Everyone fucking oh, hated yeah. her. She, she was, mean mugged. She was yeah. confronting she mean mugged people. Everyone. She, yeah, she was really good. And there was one moment, there was one thing that they were doing a lot in the kind of matches was that when they want to do a dive or something into the crowd, they motioned for the crowd to move. So she did that. She motioned for the crowd to move. Then she threw Maya Matthews back into the ring and just put <laughs> sat on the sat on the apron and started flipping the, uh, flipped all the crowd off. Especially that woman sat in front of me. Especially yeah. her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it was a really good match. I think Alex Windsor eventually won. Um, she was beating up Mayor Matthews more when another girl came out, and I've forgotten. I forgot her name. She is from. She's in the same stable as um, Mark Andrews and Gordon. It was Flash Gordon Webster in WWE. Right. Subculture is the name of the okay. um, thing. She's part okay. of that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, she came out. Um, she had, <laughs> we noticed immediately that she had a rip in her jeans, and uh, <laughs> basically she backed down Alex Windsor. But then Greedy Souls came out, the heel tag team from before. And she started she chopping started, the shit out of them. Yeah, she did. and then just as and just as they were about to go like, properly attack her, then the knights came out and for the save, uh, they backed down the Greedy Souls, and yeah, then the, the knights turned babyface. Um, after that was our Rev Pro World Champion Michael Oku uh, defeating Cameron Kai, who we later found out is only eighteen. Eighteen, um, yeah. mad. He, he was he was good. They he were was, both he really was good. brilliant. He yeah, that was so, when he um, that was when he was um, yes when we 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 basically dived it. He got us to move, and he yeah, dived yeah, the, out of the ring. And he as yeah. he was going to oh, get on right. the table. He um he turned around to our side and was like, "You may be seated. <laughs> you may now take your seats." Is what he said. I know. We, I mean, I was like, oh, thank you, sir. Go, I went. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> but there was some. There was some. Okay, Michael, listen, listen. Most of the people that were there she seemed. Was a <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. Her va his valet was yes. It leads me to this. Now, there were some eccentric people that were there. Um, some losers. Some regular people, um, <laughs> and um, there was there was a moment where his weapon of a valet was leaning on the ring. Um, she had the she had the title with her though. Yes, yeah, right. that still doesn't make it any better. Um, all of a sudden, I just saw this guy get up out of his seat and just zoom the fuck in on this woman's face. 
just with his phone. He got uncomfortably close and then went and sat back down. And um, I wasn't the only one who saw it, thankfully. I saw it yeah, as well. We were like, what yeah. the fuck is that guy doing? Do we yeah. need to call someone? I thought, okay? take, I thought he was taking a picture of the belt. But, yeah, that was. Well, he that, could have waited until we. He could have waited um, till the end. Yeah, Michael, Michael Oku won um, as he cut promo as champion, and he cut a promo straight after. Was putting over Cameron Kai for his age and for his talent and stuff like that. Uh, then the future he, of Pro. he spoke about one of the hills that wasn't there again. I forgot their name. I don't remember. Yeah, he gr- the, the the hill wasn't the hill wasn't in the building. Beautiful send off. Yeah. Beautiful send off. Um, it was yeah, but uh, he cut a promo on on that hill. Those that, was, that uh, we can't remember the name of, and then just basically told him to fuck off. <laughs> it was great. He's yeah. like, he's like, he's like, I've got one thing to say to you. Fuck off. Yeah, and then he got out of the ring and immediately apologized to the family that was at yeah. set. By, like I'm by so ringside. sorry. Yeah. Um. Uh. And then we had our main event, which was Leon Slater <laughs> versus Gabe Kidd. Uh, that, that was, was my favorite. Story. That was my favorite match. There's a little bit of a story to this because um, Gabe Kidd had been um, attacking Leon Slater. We kind of worked out because Leon Slater came out and then he immediately kind of like hit. So that when Gabe Kidd came out to attack him, he could attack him with a super he kick. Caught a su- he caught a super kick with his teeth. Yeah. yeah. Um, Gabe Kidd was a really great heel. He was obviously um, NJPW um, open weight trios tight champion or something. Tag like team that. champion. He was yeah, a yeah, part yeah, of Bullet trios. Club. Um, yeah. And it was He's great because club. loads of people had Bullet Club gold T-shirts in there, and I don't think they, that no one else. I don't think anyone who was seeing was here heard it, but he was he was he had he had him in a submission, and he was mean mugging whoever was sitting in the ring at ringside the other side of the ring, and he was like, "Look at all you with your Bullet Club gold T-shirts on." He was like, "Bullet Club gold can suck my willy," and just carried on beating the geezer. I was laughing. I heard him. I heard him. Yeah. So funny, but yeah, at the yeah. end, everyone was be- like, "The match was great." It was yeah. what you'd expect. It was, a, Slater, it was a New Japan really style. Yeah, he was good. It was a new, he wrestled a New Japan he's, style match. Yeah, and Leon um, Slater's young as well. So he's yeah, he beat the piss out of him. Um, um, Gabe Kidd, he even put him Gabe, over at the end a little bit, like a heel would do, saying he's great, but he's not as great as I am sort of yeah. thing. Yeah. And to end the show, Gabe Kidd basically challenges um, Michael Oku, who came out um, for the Rev Pro title. Um, at one point... Um, Gabe Kid did mention Osprey, and we, and we thought he was going to oh, come out. Oh, is Osprey going to come out? Kind was that if Osprey comes out, the building's going to explode? So didn't he? Didn't well, yeah. he call out Osprey. He called. He named yeah. him as well. Yeah, he 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 mentioned him in the promo, so which was like, oh, is Osprey going to come out? If he did, then you know, me and Mitchell would were going to ask for a lift. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> but it was funny because they were every, at the end, everyone was booing it, and then me and Dave were just like, "No, nah, fuck it, too sweet, bitch. Yeah, let's go. Yeah. We had, too we sweet. Had both, yeah, we, we had like, both yeah, <laughs> We had both our arms out, too sweet, just going, yeah, Gabe, kid. <laughs> we enjoyed that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it was a really good show, and we would definitely go, go see wrestling again. Yes. I would definitely pay £20 to go and yeah. watch that again. 20 yes. 20, as someone who went to All In the week before, the week before I was in Wembley watching the wrestling, it was ridiculous. I paid £30 more to watch AEW. But which, he also, yeah, which, but they've also paid three pound forty for a can of coke. Yeah, that was a violation. <laughs> yeah, that was a violation. Have it. Yeah, yeah, that was a violation. Okay. So yeah, if we go to more wrestling shows, let us know. And sorry, we've gone another week without talking about any wrestling. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, uh, let's talk about something that's been, also been happening that we're passionate about: uh, the NFL. Uh, that has just started up again. Um, me and me, well. Liam supports the Steelers, I support Broncos, and both our teams are trash. <laughs> yeah, we got absolutely fucking we got touched in a yeah. very appropriate, inappropriate place by the um yeah. by the 49ers. They hurt my soul. Yeah. Um, what was the score? Well, I don't want you don't want to know. <laughs> it was I like wanna 30, know. It was like 34 7 or something like that. We were bad. We got but one when touchdown. When the Giants score worse. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. Know. We don't support the Giants. Uh, Dave's a Broncos yeah, Dave, fan. I'm pretty sure yeah. he, they lost forty nothing. Steelers lost. Steelers yeah. lost uh, seven to thirty to the Forty ers Yeah. Oh, seven to thirty. Um, yeah. Some of the storylines coming out this week. Um, Chiefs lost to the Lions like on the first game. That was Mad. a bit of a, pretty shocking. Yeah. That was crazy. Uh, 
Yeah. Um, Browns beating the Bengals as well is a bit of a surprise. Uh, we had the Vikings losing because they normally they normally got to a good start with their offense and stuff with Justin Jefferson. Uh, what else is there? Broncos lost to the Raiders, seventeen sixteen. Uh, yeah, we. Uh, yeah, at least you. At least yours is close. We're bearing. We got. We're bearing, we, got just, we got. We got whooped. Yeah, uh, Patriots lost to the Eagles. Rams dicks on the Seahawks. Uh, Packers. They Packers beat the Bears without Rogers, um, which is a bit of a surprise. Cowboys absolutely annihilated the Giants 40-0. And the biggest storyline coming out of uh, this week is what happened in the Jets-Bills game. Um, Rogers, so, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, so Rogers is making his debut for uh, the New York Jets. He's come out to so this massive, like, um, you know, ovation. Yeah. yeah. Four plays in, says his Achilles, out for the season. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it was bad. That looked... Yeah. Incredibly, I could put you could probably see the, the the turn that his ankle makes and his body goes the other way. You could see it pop, it was yeah. disgusting. Yeah, you gotta feel you gotta feel bad for Aaron Rodgers. Hopefully, he can recover and at least get some games in for the Jets to make the whole thing worth it. But the yeah. Jets aren't too sad because they went on to win the game anyway. Was in overtime, awesome? yeah. Um, the Bills, I have no idea what happened to their offense, but as a Jets don't, defense, don't, seems to be don't something. Start fucking... Bill, I got Bill, uh, and also, I am for the very first time, and I do is doing. I can't speak. I am doing an NFL fantasy. It's the first time I've done one. Uh, me and Dave are in the same league. I won my first match. They've lost his first match. Yeah, but unfortunately, yeah, we won't. Cowboys. But unfortunately, we won't play each other until week eight. And then, we'll, yeah, we're definitely going to have some trash talk on that one. So we're going to have some trash talk on a bug, but, but, but until then, yeah, um, I've got yeah, I've got a very the, hard game this week. I don't know who Dave's got, but I've got a very hard game. I've got a hard one as well. Yeah, I've got yeah. I've got the number one seed at the moment. Um, yeah. Anyway, the other the other story I want to talk about that's related to the NFL is what happened at this Wisconsin pub. I believe it's called uh, Jack's. I think it's called Jack's Jack's American. Like bar or whatever. Bar and grill, like probably. Yeah. Um, it's basically a massive sports bar in Wisconsin. And they were showing the Jets uh, Bills game live. And because Aaron Rodgers was obviously synonymous with the Green Bay Packers for so long and uh, Wisconsin, Green Bay is in Wisconsin, uh, this bar was offering a promotion that if the um, Jets lose, then they're, and the drinks are free. So everyone was went and ran up these tabs, um, well, started these tabs anyway. Rogers and then out, Rogers got injured. Gets injured immediately. So everyone then starts going and paying more because they f- assume that the Jets are going to lose to the Bills now they ain't got Rogers. And yeah, by overtime, everyone's got these huge bar bills to pay. It was great because there was a, there was a, in the video you sent in was that moment where they'd won and yeah. everyone in that bar was panicking. Yeah, no. There's so, a lot oh, of people that. Oh, shit. There's a lot of people that probably have got payment plans that with that, that bar yep. now. They're playing that in installments. Well, aren't they doing I've, that? Um, aren't they doing that all season? Well, I think they were going to do it all season, but I think they had a proviso on it that Rogers had to be starting. Oh, gotcha. So, unfortunately, we'll it seems like Rogers we'll out. But you know, we'll see. I mean, the, the, the bar made a lot of money from that first Yo, week. So yeah, maybe, yeah, 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 yeah. The Steelers got slapped, and that was sad. Yeah. No big Ben anymore. Big sad. Yeah. Didn't the Patriots retire though. Tom Brady's number this week? Probably. No, nah, because it's when he comes out of retirement, he's going to need it back. <laughs> <laughs> probably, yeah. I imagine number 12 probably won't be used in Patriots anymore. It's too synonymous. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's pretty much all the NFL news at the moment. We'll keep that uh, okay. <laughs> keep that going if it's, uh, anything notable happens, I guess. Um the last thing that we could talk about, really, is uh, the other football, the proper football. Proper uh, football. England, England played some international games this week. They oh. had a European, they had a European qualifier match against Ukraine away, which wasn't really in Ukraine for obvious reasons. And, they played and in didn't, Poland and didn't win. No, they drew one all, which I don't think is a bad result for an away game. Well, Ukraine's one of the hardest games. Could have picked, could have picked a better side to take with him, but. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, that's what we'll get to. But yeah, and then England won the friendly uh, against Scotland, which wasn't really a friendly. Friendly. If you watched it, you watched it, it wasn't a friendly. And it's England good to versus see that Scotland that is not a fucking friendly, but yeah. It's, it's, it's good to see that rivalry is still alive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, they England won uh, in the end 3 1 after going 2 0 up fairly comfortably. Jude Bellingham is He's a fucking baller. monster, mate. <laughs> he has taken baller. Zidane's number and just become Zidane. He's unreal. He's so yeah. good now. Even better. He's so good. But you know exactly. who's not good? Harry Maguire. Harry yeah, Harry Maguire. Maguire scores an own goal in the game. and Harry Maguire Gareth... doing Harry Maguire things. Gareth in the Ukraine game, he, in the Ukraine game, he marked Mark Gahey when Sinchenko scored. Mm. <laughs> Uh, Gareth Southgate has condemned the ridiculous treatment of Harry Maguire, saying the criticism, uh, the criticism the defender has faced is a joke. Um, no. no, 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 it's not. You picking him when he hadn't kicked a fucking kicked a ball in this prem season. The fact that you picked him is a fucking joke. The fact that you picked Calvin Phillips is a fucking joke. The fact that you picked Jordan Henderson is a fucking joke. I'm not saying it just because they play for West Ham, but War Prowse and Bowen have got off to a good start. You name me any uh, other player, though, that has actually played minutes. It doesn't matter who they play for. As long as they're English, they deserve more of a chance than any of them. Yeah. Why is it so, taking this long to get a call-up for Tomori? Yeah. So this is what uh, Southgate has said. I've never known a player treated the way he is. He's been an absolute stalwart for us in the second has most successful... He's been as an absolute stalwart for us in the second most successful England team for decades. He's been an absolute key part of that. I've talked about the importance of our senior players, and he's been crucial among that. Every time he goes on the field, the resilience he shows is absolutely incredible. He's a top player, and we're all with him, and our fans were brilliant with him. That's what he's saying. Does he have to do um, that, though? Does he have to say that, though, to keep morale up? Probably, yeah, because he knows that Aaron Maguire probably wants to fucking just head by a brick wall. If he did, that brick wall will come down. What but. do you think of him saying that? Um, to him saying about the importance of senior players, because that could have, like when the England team came out, a lot of us were just like, "Oh my god, he's picked him again." Uh, he's picked Henderson, even though he's gone to Saudi Arabia. He's picked, you know, uh, Maguire, and he's picked. Um, yeah, but you've, he's got like he's got there. young players there that have been been in tournaments. Yeah, that lead in their they lead at club level. Mm. Bellingham's played with enough. Be Bellingham is playing in midfield with Tony Cruz. Is it Cruz and Modric? Yes. Yeah, fuck off. Fuck not off, Cruz. Bellingham. Cruz is not, not there Cruz anymore? Tim. No, Cruz is Mo Modric. Chumani. There you go. Them two, them two players alone. Then you've got... Um, there's Harry loads Kane. of players. Harry Kane? Take Harry... Yeah. No, but take Harry Kane because... He's your striker. That's where your goals are coming from. You don't get much more senior than him, really. Why do you need more than? Why do you need multiple senior players? You don't I would need say that many. If he's prioritising senior experience, Sterling wasn't in that team. Yeah, Sterling's Sterling been on Sterling this season. The start of this season, Sterling's been amazing. He had a good. You know, he had a good game against Luton. He had a good game against <laughs> us, <laughs> even though we we won I and suppose, he, tore, yeah. he, he tore us to pieces. Yeah. He played. He's yeah. played really well. Yeah. He probably deserves his spot. He deserves his spot more than Phillips and Maguire, who haven't had any minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah, and Henderson. Yeah. I don't give a fuck if Henderson's senior or not. You fucked off to go and play in the Saudi league, bruv. What do I also. Think, what do you make of Pickford uh, being picked as number uh, one? I think Ramsdale should be number one. He is number one. Pickford's number one. I know. No, he I don't is, I think he should, but I think Ramsdale should be number one. Yeah, I mean, he should be. Yeah, it's hard with like Pickford's obviously got his ups and downs kind of thing, but he when he puts on an English shirt, he does like change. He's a better, better keeper, and he is. You want your said, keeper battle tested. Pickford said he's in the he's in the prime of his life playing now. Why are you playing for Everton then, bruv? But <laughs> they've not won a game yet. I know yeah, the goalkeeper can only do so much with the defense in front of him, but still. Why are I you mean, so why, why, why are you so wank? The one thing the thing I don't like is he done the 
he done the he, he done the mistake against South South Sheffield United. Sorry, where he, he bounced off him. He couldn't really help that. He, he, he bounced off him or whatever. And then he's he, laughing about it. He done the wonder save like at the end of the game, and he's motioning to the crowd like stuff and gesturing to them like he's a big deal and shit. But they've just drawn two all with Sheffield United, newly like, promoted side who haven't exactly. won a game. Exactly. You nearly so, went you know, down. Really... You literally were saved last season by the skin of mm. the skin of I your foreskin. I feel, I, feel, I feel he has an he, I feel he has an ego that he's not really entitled to. But that's you know, I've, yeah, he feel you think he, he is a better keeper than people give him credit for. Is what he is, say. but he's not England number one quality. I'm yeah. sorry, but he's not. You mentioned Jordan Henderson. Something that I do want to mention actually is that he gave an interview about his um, like the criticism about him going to Saudi Arabia. Oh, well, how like it's that. not all about the money. The shit that he said in that interview he is has not so him much. In a good light. Do you know, out of all the players that have gone to the Saudi League, do you know who I respect the most? Koulibaly. Because he came out and he said, the amount of money I've been offered will set my family up for generations. He went, it's also, he was like, I'm also a practicing Muslim and so are my family. He was like, it's a Muslim country. It's my beliefs. I'm going to take my family out there and give them the life that I could ever, I could only dream of. And you know what? Props for just being a man about it and saying, you know what? You see how much money they're offering me? Fuck it. I'm going to go and play there. Yeah. So you know what? Yeah. Don't lie about we. I'm not doing it for the money. Why are you? What? Why are you playing silly money? Why don't you play for free then? You can play for free. He said. He said. He said it was an opportunity to kind of like for the opportunity to grow the Saudi league, but come on. There's, but I swear, I swear that. you, um, I swear when you signed that club, when they showed your highlights, they, um, they showed them in black and white so they couldn't see the pride armband you were wearing. Yeah. Because, you know, and, kind of yeah. illegal to be gay out there, yet you were like, and that's, you're an ally. And that's the Are other you? thing that, and that's the other thing where he kind of like said about how in his time in Qatar with the World Cup, he didn't see any of the things with like LGBT issues or stuff like that. No, you wouldn't because they're doing their best behavior during the World Cup. Well, more importantly, you, no, you're not going to see it anyway because, funnily enough, Henderson, you're not gay. You're not it's, part of it. You can be an ally, but you're not in the trenches dealing with the shit that they have to deal with. Yeah. So you're not going to see it. That's like him saying, I didn't see no racism. No, you're not going to. It's as simple as that. You're not You're not in it. Yeah. So, so yeah, um, unfortunately, that's kind of like uh, dampened the opinion of Jordan Henderson. Although, yeah, especially, the bump, the court, especially the court of public opinion. He's yeah, just fuck him, man. The money he's and stuff. a clown. Fuck him. Yeah. Um, Stephen Gerrard's his manager as well. Can't Steven Gerrard. Steven Gerrard speaking uh, Arabic in a scout uh, accent is horrifying. Did he actually do that? Yeah, he's done it. It's terrifying. Oh dear, oh, oh, I've God heard bet. this. Yeah, it's, um, it's awful, mate. It's horrible. Scary. Has Scary this, to be fair. Has, has the Saudi Pro League started? Yes, it sucks. Yeah. Do you know what it's like watching? What? Women's football. <laughs> And, and they've got all you this stuff. But you, know what, but you know what's better? <laughs> Women's football. <laughs> Women's football American is better football. than that. It's like watching the MLS. Don't, no, no, no. I'm not going to start talking about the MLS. No, no, no. no I, can't, <laughs> I, can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. After seeing what... Watch it. If you ever want to see what the how bad the MLS really is, watch Inter Miami play. No, no. Let me rephrase that. Watch... Is it, it's, Jordi, it's Jordi Alaba playing left back, isn't it? Jordi Alba. Watch Alaba pass the Busquets. Watch Busquets pass the Messi. Alba. Is it Alba? Alba, yeah. It's Alba. Sorry. Watch them three pass to each other. No one else. Just them three. Just watch it, and that's how bad the MLS is. Shocking. Shocking. Cool. There we go. That was our that was our week of sport. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we finally got it in there. Rev Pro is good. NFL's back. Fuck Jordan Henderson. There's your title. <laughs> Thank you for listening, guys. You can find all previous Saddle Chats and all podcasting platforms. You can also find all our main episodes there. Thank you and peace.